Hey guys, I'm Theobald Hedman, and welcome to Southern Ingenuity. But if you've got a garage or workshop, then you've probably got a tool that you've used a thousand times and never really stopped to think about just how dangerous it can actually be. Today's video, I'm going to be discussing a potentially deadly hazard that could be sitting in your shop or garage right now. I want to explain some of the physics as to how and why it can be such a lethal threat, and I'm going to tell you some things that you can do to help keep you safe. So stay tuned. <laughs> talking about is your air compressor. Now an air compressor is an extremely handy tool to have in any workshop or garage. We use them for anything from inflating tires to running air power tools or even blowing dust and debris from our work area. And you may have it sitting somewhere over in a corner or underneath the workbench or even outside the shop altogether. And if you're like me, you rarely think to do the one thing that's critical for keeping your compressor in good safe working condition. When was the last time that you drained the water from your compressor tank? Prior to making this video, I honestly can't remember how long it's been since the last time I drained my tank. But it's something that needs to be done on a regular basis because your tank is kind of like a balloon. You've got all that compressed air in there pushing really hard against the side trying to get out. And if it ruptures, now I'm gonna explain just how dangerous and potentially deadly this can be. And you may be surprised to learn just how much force is acting against the inside of that tank. But first, let's take a look at some security camera footage of a compressor explosion in someone's home garage. Now this gentleman is extremely lucky to have survived this because it exploded about four feet away from him. Fortunately, there was a family member close by who was able to put tourniquets around his arm and leg. And according to the video, the man spent about three months in the hospital. Now I put a link to this video in the description. In this video, a security camera captures a compressor explosion in someone's backyard shop. And you can see the tank actually blasts off into the air before landing several yards away in the swimming pool. And apparently, one of the bystanders was struck by a piece of the flying debris. If you'd like to see this full video, there's a link to it in the description. Now, for those who may be wondering how water gets inside the tank in the first place, I'm gonna explain that real quick. We've all seen how water droplets form on the outside of a cold glass on a hot day. That's because there's water vapor in the air itself. It's called humidity, and it can vary based on changes in the air temperature, air movement, or the proximity to warm bodies of water in your area. Now, as this warm, moist air comes into contact with the cold glass, the air temperature cools down to a point to where it can no longer hold that moisture, and thus the water vapor condenses back into a liquid, forming those droplets on the outside of that glass. So as your compressor, is pumping all this outside air and compressing it down into that tank, the same thing that's happening on the outside of that glass is happening on the inside of that tank. Now, as this water starts to build up on the inside of the tank, it creates a couple of problems. One, over time, it reduces the capacity of your tank. More water in the tank means less room for air. And this will cause your compressor to cycle on and off more than it has to. And of course, that puts more wear and tear on the motor and the compressor. I once drained over 15 gallons of water out of an 80 gallon compressor tank. But the most dangerous problem water can create is rust. Rust forms on the inside of your tank when the metal reacts with oxygen and water and starts to corrode or oxidize. Over time, excessive rusting can cause the metal to weaken to the point of failure. Take a look at these old metal pipes. They've been outside and exposed to the elements for a really long time, and they've rusted to the point of creating this pitted texture on the surface. Needless to say, corrosion this bad weakens the metal. So if you don't drain the water from your tank, the same sort of thing can be going on on the inside of it. So obviously, a weakened compressor tank is a problem, but just how dangerous can it be? First, we need to get an understanding of just how much air is compressed down into that tank when it reaches its shutoff pressure. To do that, we're gonna use an equation derived from Boyle's Law. Boyle's Law states that the volume of a gas at a fixed temperature is inversely proportional to the pressure exerted by the gas. So that basically means that if you compress gas down into a smaller space, the pressure that it exerts is going to increase. So how do we find out just how much air is compressed down into that tank when it reaches shutoff pressure? So we'll start by calculating the volume of the compressor tank itself. 
And we'll use mine as an example. It's got a 60 gallon tank. Now, one gallon is equal to 231 cubic inches. So if we multiply 60 gallons times 231 cubic inches, we get 13,860 cubic inches. Now let's convert that into cubic feet. One cubic foot is 1,728 cubic inches. So by dividing 13,860 by 1,728, we see that the volume of our tank is about 8.02 cubic feet. And that's about this much air. Eight cubic feet. Well, now that we know the volume of our tank, we'll use this formula to figure out how much air is going to be inside it when it reaches the cutoff pressure. It shows us that pressure one times volume one is equal to pressure two times volume two. By substituting in our known values, we get an equation that looks like this. For pressure one, we'll use atmospheric pressure of 14.7. Volume one is our unknown. That's how much we're going to be compressing down into the tank. Pressure two will be the compressor shutoff, which in my case is 120 PSI. Volume two is the internal volume of the tank, which we've already established is 8.02 cubic feet. We can now solve for volume one. So by multiplying 120 times 8.02, that gives us 962.4. Divide that by 14.7, and we see that volume one equals 65.47 cubic feet. And that's about this much air, about seven times more air than was in the tank to start with. Well, now that we know how much gas has been compressed down into the tank and it's generating 120 PSI, just how much force is that putting on the tank? To calculate that, we're gonna use an equation derived from Pascal's law. Pascal's law tells us that Pressure applied to an enclosed fluid is transmitted uniformly throughout the volume of the fluid. So that means when the tank is pressurized to 120 PSI, every square inch of the inside of that tank has 120 pounds of force pushing against it, pushing against it, trying to get out. Now that adds up really quick. Just this small section that I've got marked on the side of my tank, which is 10 inches by 10 inches, has 12,000 pounds of force acting against it from the inside. If we do a rough calculation for the total inside surface area, we get over 3,100 square inches. And that means there's over 372,000 pounds of force pushing against the inside of that tank. So now, are you starting to get an idea of just how dangerous a compressor can be? And if you don't maintain it and it ruptures, all right, maybe not quite that powerful, but in all seriousness, extremely dangerous and potentially deadly nonetheless. So, what can you do to help prevent an explosion from happening to you? Well, as I stated earlier, simply drain the water from your tank on a regular basis. There should be a valve on the bottom that you can manually open to drain the water out. Now, if you're like me and can't remember to do that, there's products on the market that'll automatically drain the water for you. And I'm gonna be installing one of these devices on my tank in a future video. So if you'd like to see that, be sure to click the subscribe button and the notifications button. Also, you should never try to repair a tank by welding, grinding, heating it, bending it, or doing anything that can compromise the strength of that tank. It's simply just not worth it. If you know your tank is bad, it's better to just put it out of service and buy yourself a new one. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you haven't already, click the subscribe button because I got some more videos on the way. So until next time, I'm Theobald Hedman. Thanks for watching Southern Ingenuity.